Hi, my name is Vinay and in this video we will go through constructing an experiment named as common source amplifier uh, with PMOS current as the load. So this is what the, the experiment uh, says that you have to consider a common source amplifier with PMOS current mirror and see its transient and AC response and uh, measure the factors. Okay, so I've just demonstrated how that how you can construct it and uh, how you can simulate this. So this is what the schematic I've made. I have posted uh, the simulation of the schematic simulation in my previous video. So I will do the same parameters and for the construction over here. So as you can see that uh, the width and length of all transistors is all same. That five micrometer is the width and one point one micrometer, that is ninety nanometer technology, uh, is the length of the transistor. Okay. So let's construct this using the Micron software. So that was the software platform I'm using, uh, Micron, which is a CMOS layout design software. So first of all, I just change my technology to 90 nanometer. So file, select foundry, and select CMOS 90 nanometer root file. So on the bottom side, you can confirm that uh, it shows 90 nanometer technology file. OK, so you can go and access the palette. And from there, you click on Mosonetta. So the default length is 90 nanometer. So let it be like this. So you just set this to 1000 nanometer. That is nothing but uh, one micrometer. Okay. So I will. We need five micrometer. So what I will do, I will make the transistors in parallel. So that will be an optimum design. So I just increase the number of fingers to five. So I just place it on the board. Okay. I will need one more. So click one more again and say generate device and place on the side. Then uh, I will need the same size of the PMOS. So the PMOS, the current will be slightly less, but that's okay. I will not tune up that part as of now. I'm not into tuning as of now. I'm just into construction of this. So one more PMOS I will require. So place it on the side. Yeah, so I can use the move option and bring this guy a little bit. To, oh, sorry. I just click again and bring this guy a little bit closer and align it to this yeah so all the transfers are over here so for the construction require to form a PMOS current mirror uh, connected with a biasing uh, NMOS transistor so let's do that so I just select the MOS gate and uh, as the PMOS transistor the gates are shorted so I short all the gates okay then I take the metal one and short the top side of the PMOS transistor so that would be my VDD line and short the output nodes so this would be uh, the output node of the last stage of uh, PMOS current mirror so these this transistor becomes in parallel all these five transistors are also in parallel so effectively they will have a five micrometer of width then I select this metal and short the output of this and the output of this is connected to one of the uh, drains of this NMOS and short this one okay then short the gates of the following NMOS transistors and this is the input so that I just bring a little bit of outside and metal one again and short this one and this is my output node, so I just bring it nicely, a little bit outside just to indicate that this is my output node. Okay, so yeah, and the metal one shot the NMOS bottom one, so this becomes VSS. I can extend the VSS to both of them. Yeah, so this becomes shorter. Yeah. Now the, the construct is almost ready. Okay, I have to just shot this node to this one. So maybe I just use the mouse gates and bring a little bit down and a little bit on the left and use this one contact between metal and poly and place it somewhere over here. So I can double click and verify that these are node connected. So as you can see that all nodes connected I can just visualize and verify that they are connected to each other. Yeah. Okay, so um, I believe the construction is complete. So this node is connected, this node is connected, and this shall gate and drain and shorted and connected. Yeah. So this gate drain is all shorted. Okay, now let's simulate this. 
So I take and uh, VDD supply for the VDD of the PMOS, VDD for the envelope, VSS for the ground. Okay. And uh, I need biasing voltage for this gate. So anywhere I can put on the gate of the PMOS and more sorry and make it half of the supply. So I just name it to V bias. Okay. And uh, I need to apply a sort of input to this one. So I just call it V in. So what values etc. We will compute that later of the offset space link because the offset has to be according to that. <clears throat> and this is my output node. So I just put it a V out to this and then small capacitance to this with the same value 0 0.05 picofarad. And there we are. I think I'm ready to go. So I just change the background color by going to white background and something like this. I just extend the runtime. Okay, so that's my fun run, first run of simulation, but more or less I'm interested in knowing my voltage versus voltage or the DC transfer response. So I ask him to show me the crossover. So the value of the crossover is 0.542. So this is the value I will set in my bi I mean biasing and this one, not the biasing, but at least for the V in. Yeah, so V in, so this has to be 542, 0.542. Okay, and there we go. So, yeah, this works in an idea, need a nice inverting amplifier account source. So, if you will see the voltage versus voltage, and if you see the slope, so that is the gain. So, it's almost like three and a half, almost 3.6 is the gain inverting most. That's why it shows minus gain. So, 3.6 is the gain, and uh, you can see this works very nicely. Okay, so you can even see the min max voltage so that this one okay for the v out it is almost like 0.6 or 0.57 somewhere is a swing and if you ask him to show for the v in so he shows that it's 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 and 0 0.6 so it's almost like gain of three okay so that is the gain you get and if you can see uh, the the bandwidth of it okay so for that, what we can do is I just ask him to increase the frequency by a factor of 20 and simulate this again. So thereby you see in the transit response also, you can just know all this delay and this value so that you can see a clean input. Okay, I think the 20 was too high and it became very fast. So I asked him to try the 10. So there you see that uh, the amplitude of the output signal drops significantly after a while so that indicates that yes uh, this has a limited frequency band of working so i'm making maybe four okay and try again so thereby you can see that yes the gain is not consistent the gain reduces significantly so you can find out at what frequency it drops it so you can just reset this and you can see that almost around like close to two gigahertz or three gigahertz there's a gain stops um, uh, being continuously held over okay so that's what you can find out you need to gain bandwidth and other AC response you can even see the frequency versus time response so you can just switch it to maybe 10 50 gigahertz so thereby you can see the linear scale the input frequency is increasing and you can see the output gain starts dropping so you can find out at what frequency the gain was dropped after after or for a particular level okay and uh, maybe you can just reduce this to two maybe further so that you can see for a longer run yeah so this you can find a longer run so around two two and a half gigahertz the gain drops okay so then i can reset and start again now okay so this is what a common source amplifier is, a bit a PMOS transforms as a load, current mirror. Okay, so you can try modulating the bit and sizes of various transfers, but I would recommend to do that in schematic. That's more faster and easier. And uh, see for yourself that how varying of the size of the transfers will impact on the performance of the amplifier.
Okay. Thank you very much.